So for now, I think it's years, something yeah, like yeah. that, so, nice. for a long time. I uh, was really uh, involved in small parts of his uh, research. Uh, Lotem uh, gave his entire uh, uh, studies here in the University of Haifa, a uh, proud local uh, uh, He is working on, uh, he's a geomorphologist working on the onion uh, sediments uh, sections. He did his PhD in the Negev Desert. And uh, then he uh, started a postdoc in Bangladesh University with uh, uh, Yoel Raskin, Professor Yoel Raskin, who was also a postdoc here uh, in my lab. Uh, and now he is still working on the uh, oil sediments, on sediments that are moving with the wind, but he's also using this application for to study uh, the archaeological and uh, a very special and unique archaeological site. Uh, near, near Caesarea. He uses, or oh, I think his main uh, expertise is using uh, luminescence dating, uh, relative and absolute dating. And I think it's possible to say that you're almost the expert now in Israel uh, in this method. Yeah. Uh, now he's, uh, he's doing a postdoc in Bailan and he's also a lecturer in the ONU College that is uh, uh, affiliated to the University of Haifa. So, no, please. So they will talk to this camera for the people at home. Hello, everybody. Yes, yeah, so uh, my name is Latin, but you can introduce me. And uh, I'm not sure because maybe I will stand here so you guys can see me. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a very uh, irregular landscape located. Uh, um, hinterland of the ancient city of Caesarea. Um, basically, this is a sandy coastline. And we are going to talk about um, this unique plot and burn morphological uh, structure or landscape, which we um, see there. Uh, to, uh, oh. So, the presentation uh, will be at the form of, I, I will present uh, two parts of uh, my research. Uh, one just accepted manuscript, manuscript, and I will talk about the uh, innovation in terms of agrotechnology technological uh, in ancient times um, uh, that was made to modify the sand because sandy uh, sediments are sometimes could be very difficult and some the environments could be, especially eolian, could be very difficult to sustain uh, agriculture. And afterwards, I will, um, I will try to uh, classify uh, crucial or, or yeah, crucial uh, periods of the landscape evolution. Afterwards, Adam will give a talk uh, as well about his master's degree, master's degree with some, some of his uh, understandings about, and he will give some inputs about spatial analysis of this area. Yes? Okay. Uh, okay. So just for location, um, so Mediterranean Sea and Caesarea is somewhere at the coast, just, uh, I don't know how much, let's say 60 to 40 kilometers south to Haifa. Okay. Um, now I want to show you a nice video video worth a thousand words. Okay. So you can see here this unique, I don't know how much you're familiar with beach morphologies, but you can see here this uh, unique checkerboard like uh, uh, pattern, which is not natural. Dunes are, do not uh, look like that. Um, they, you have different types of dunes, but this is none, none of them are like this. And as much as you walk, you see a lot of uh, ancient uh, materials, ceramic, glasses, and bones, and uh, this dark sediment as well, which is uh, very uh, familiar in archaeological, um, uh, geoarchaeological studies. Um, so if I'm going back to the area, so you can see this is more or less in the picture, uh, how it looks like. So. 
we analyzed the three excavation seasons, okay, and we analyzed uh, out the path, out joined in the middle of it, kind of thing. And uh, we, there is a, a lot of information about certain areas. Uh, I don't know how much you can see here, but in here there is a small mound, uh, not very small, like seven meter uh, elevated mound, elevated mound, artificially elevated mound. This is area F, plot and a small structure. Area C, which is plot and burn. Area C, which is a line kiln. And area B, which is a multifunctional oh, yeah. okay. purpose. But um, we will dive into some of them uh, as we go on. Okay. And so, like I said, the whole area, so we have to figure out how, how we tackle it because it's a very large area and how to how we're going to analyze it. So um, the best thing is to kind of separate between, um, just for the analysis, afterwards when you discuss things and understand things, you correlate, but for the analysis, to separate between the agricultural system, the, the plots and burns, in which we have excavations and we did trenches and we exposed them, and, to, and from the structures, which we saw as well. So. This is the lime kiln, for example. This is a structure in area F, which is located here in the conversion between the two berms. And this is the area G, the, the mound that you probably can't really see the height of it, but it's this, this bit here, about seven meters, and this structure is on top of it. So it was elevated artificially and was located on top of this mound. So separation between agriculture uh, purposes and the structures for analysis, okay? And this will help to follow with the presentation. Um, so a little more, little bit more information about the area itself. So we have the meteorologi meteorological station of the Israel Meteorological Service. And we can see wind patterns, are basically wind is blowing from every direction to every direction, meaning that sun can be uh, transported all over. Um, and we have uh, the rainfall is from uh, five to seven uh, uh, month period. Yeah, so it, it's important for agriculture, agricultural purposes. And uh, temperature, you can see we don't have that high variations of, uh, of uh, minimum and maximum temperature, such as you can see on mountains or in desert environments. Sorry. Um, so this is just to characterize the area, okay? The methods, like I said, we, there were three excavation fields. So we did geoarchaeological. Uh, so if you want the term for this uh, study or, or, or my input is a geoarchaeological. Uh, and uh, that there is archeologist as well, uh, Itamar Taxel, which is as well involved in the project. Um, so we did these surveys and we did sedimentological analysis and micromorphology. We did relative and absolute uh, portable analysis. And we, we as well uh, um, um, put a meteorological station, a small meteorological station at plot B, uh, the area of D, to measure the microclimatic effects of the morphological uh, modification. So, Results. So what I will do, I will show the results according to the um, to the goal I presented before. So I will first show results of the first goal of the agrotechnological innovation, and then I will show results referring to uh, the um, the landscape evolution. So what we have basically uh, as a geoarchaeologist, geomorphologist, geolog geologist, you name it. First of all, you want to uh, define, classify the units you are seeing. Okay, so that's the first thing we are doing. So basically, you can see this This is the burn section. This is the plot section. And, and here, this is the most detailed uh, plot sec uh, burn section we have. Basically, we just had a, a, a heavy vehicle. I don't know how we... Uh, super. Uh, uh, we have that this heavy vehicle, like a bulldozer, bulldozer, yeah. excavator. 
Okay, so it exposed this, this burn part and we were able to analyze it. Okay, so what we see at the bottom, we have this, uh, I call it sandy field unit, which is very, it's still uh, sandy, yellowish, uh, pale grayish maybe, uh, with uh, <coughs> ceramics and uh, other, what we call as refuse. Okay, on top of it, a little bit more pale uh, uh, unit, paler unit, and this was covered with a dark gray unit. Okay, we termed it in, in the burns, it was termed anthro sediment. This pale unit is with, filled with uh, small uh, fragments of uh, ceramics, of uh, charcoal, of bones, of uh, uh, aggregates of calcium carbonate, and stuff like that. And on top of it, there is this uh, yellow grayish unit, uh, which is, um, I will explain later what it is, but this is the important thing. It's in, encrusted. And this crust, if you go to this area, you will see that's what uh, started the, the research from first place, I think, is that this crust covering the whole area. It covers the whole area. Okay, so this is the burns. So we have sandy field, anthro sediment, and encrusted pale gray sand. Okay. At the plots, we have, uh, in some occasion, we have red loam at the bottom. This is a plot, uh, dig until, it was dig until, it was dark, sorry, until uh, we reached groundwater, okay? So we have the red loam at the bottom. We have the base of sand unit, okay? This is uh, the natural sand unit. And then we have on top of it, the anthrosol. And what you can see here uh, in the binicular images is that this, um, if you look at this, both uh, the base of sand and this uh, anthrosol unit, you can see that you have additives of fine, fine grain additives into the local sand, okay? And then on top of it, you have uh, this uh, uh, paler uh, gray unit, which as well have some additives, but much less, and it's much, much more friable uh, compared to this dark gray sediment. And on top of it, we, we, uh, we identified a brownish uh, unit, okay? Uh, so the little, uh, 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 the smaller grains here uh, might be as well organic, not necessarily additives, okay? So we wanted to explore these additives a bit more in terms of understanding what they modified them. So uh, uh, we did the micromorphology, like I said, uh, this was done by uh, Ali, which is not here anymore, I think. She went back to Australia. And so, but what we did, we did the FTIR and on the fine grains, we did wet seeding to, to, um, to see basically the, the fine component. And we did FTIR analysis on this fine component. And if you compare between different peaks in the FTIR, um, you can see, you can have some assessment assessment about the uh, calcium or origination, originate, what the calcium originate form, okay? Is it natural or is it uh, anthropogenic? Okay, so uh, what we found that the fine uh, grain additives are uh, anthropogenic and they are f similar to what is uh, defined uh, in previous works uh, using this uh, FDIR method, method as ash or plaster, okay? So these are definitely uh, a lime kiln uh, product. And as you have seen, we had a lime kiln in the area. And basically, if you, when you look at the slices from the micromorphology, um, we came up with this model suggesting, suggesting that uh, what we have, we have blocking at the pores between the quartz grains, which changes the hydraulic properties of the sandy soil or the sandy sediment soil. And this uh, affects uh, as well uh, infiltration, infiltration rate and uh, main infiltration rate. So what you have, you can uh, have water uh, uh, staying, obtaining instead of infiltrating further down into the ground, okay? And that's probably the most innovative uh, uh, methods uh, used. I will, I will discuss later when it was developed. 
In terms of groundwater itself, so you can see there is not much of a variation in groundwater. The highest uh, in the whole area, which we had data on, is 0 0.6 meters. And this is today, it occurs because of the Menasha Reservoir, which is a reservoir made here, actually, to, give, to, to feed this uh, uh, groundwater area, okay? Maybe the aquifer, but the groundwater mainly. And um, um, if we look at past analogs, so there was a time that this Roman Byzantine uh, dam, it, it, it's it was used to, uh, to take water into the, uh, to transport water into the ancient city of Caesarea. But this was a gravity-based uh, system. And it was malfunctioning uh, during the early Islamic period, which is a period which I will elaborate on later. And so do you have this dam, which is not, uh, the dam is functioning, but the, the, um, all the, the pumping and the water transport uh, uh, system doesn't work. So you have this reservoir uh, 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 accumulating here, okay? And that could be a possible analog for this uh, uh, groundwater feeding. Um, in terms of microclimate and, uh, and morphology, uh, so this is the meteorological station that we put in the plot comparing to the Israeli meteorological station located here. And this is within the plot located here. So you can see, first of all, wind is much weaker within the plot, okay? It decreases to the maximum value is four meters per second. It's very low, okay? Um, and it's uh, as well, you can see that it's mainly to one direction. I must say that our wind measurement is, uh, we made it on purpose. It's closer to the ground. It's about 30 centimeters, which is nothing. The meteorological station, it's 10 meters. This is how, because they have, they need to, um, they have some um, um, protocol in which they work so they can compare different stations. Work. But our interest was the plot itself and what's going on in the surface, on the surface, sorry. So uh, the wind, you can see, decreases uh, a lot, but it could be affected as well by the elevation, but still it's probably uh, a greater decrease. And Mark, what is very interesting is that it's ma mainly west western wind, from the western wind, okay? And that is uh, uh, as well an important thing to consider. <laughs> Additionally, you can see that you have a, a higher uh, common, many more events of uh, high relative humidity, which are important for dew formation. Okay, so these are the micro, uh, uh, microclimatic influences uh, induced by morphology. Um, so if I want to kind of conclude the uh, innovation in terms of agro uh, uh, technology, so in the rainy season, you can uh, harvest the rainwater um, using the anthro, anthrosol and anthro sediment we, uh, and covering it with this uh, pale gray sediment on top. And then you have this uh, nice uh, water retention in this unit and low filtration rate at this unit, and then it kind of captures small basin, which captures uh, at each plot and burn. Uh, and in the summer season, you can uh, take water uh, pretty easily from 0 0.8 to meter uh, uh, deep uh, groundwater, which you can easily take and manually uh, irrigate your uh, uh, orchard or field or whatever uh, it was, we are not certain yet. But um, it was a part of, uh, probably, we suggest that it was a part of a period in which um, there was an implementation. Impl impl they tried to um, uh, incorporate um, this uh, tropical uh, uh, crops in the Mediterranean. And you can do it if you have uh, irrigation. In, uh, in the summer season, which is hot, you might, you could, you might be able to do that. So that is our understanding according to the, uh, as well, previous uh, studies 
uh, relating to the period, to the earliest land period. So now let's dig in a bit more why early Islamic period. Um, so this is the second goal, okay? Um, so a few words about the portable OSL. OSL, I hope most of you are familiar with, uh, luminescence methods. The portable OSL, it gives you a relative uh, phonologies, okay? And what, what you do, basically it's a very easy procedure. You, you collect the samples, you measure, him, measure them in dark uh, settings, and then you can uh, easily get these nice profiles, uh, especially if you put them against the stratigraphic sections, and you can uh, have much more information about the phonology, and uh, as well, you can be much more wiser in deciding which samples to choose for all cell data, uh, especially if you have thick units. Um, so let's go uh, uh, about, let's say, three examples uh, of these uh, profiles. So this is the area G, the, the mound. Uh, it doesn't show the, well, it is uh, seven meters, but we don't, we don't have the whole seven meters because it, we didn't go all the way into the uh, middle of the mound. Um, but what you can see here basically is that you have these uh, steps uh, which were used to elevate this uh, ground, this mound, uh, um, which were around all the mounds, surrounding the mound. And you see here similar, similar sediment, sedimentary units. So you have these sandy fields. Uh, now I can already talk about dates, okay, because we are on the second ball. So you can see here these, these uh, bottom units are re related to the early Islamic period. Okay, and on top of it, you have this uh, uh, the dark gray uh, anthro sediment, which is dated uh, uh, to 1000 AD plus minus 50, and this is all already early Islamic period. Okay, then we have this uh, weird age that we are not sure why it happened. It could happen with all cell dating, it happens quite a lot, especially if you are dating anthropogenic. Uh, sediments because you are not sure what was the transport process and how good or how well the bleaching was on the pathway. But what is interesting is this this unit here. This is a small uh, well, a small boulder I would say of of a uh, kukar of olianite, which was used for the structure probably itself on the top of the mound, and it was uh, it it rolled down here. So this definitely indicating that the that the it was the end of the or the abandonment of the area itself. And this unit, or at least it indicates that by this time it was already abandoned. Uh, and this is not very, it's it means that the whole thing is not very uh, long, it's not that a long period. Let's say 200 give or take, okay? Uh, so you can get a lot of information from this kind of profile. Um, on, for example, the kiln, the land kiln. So the land kiln, uh, what was interesting for me as a geomorphologist as well, it was filled, it was a sediment trap, okay? And the sand was filled in it. So with a portable device, this, this unit, the red sand, um, as well, we have some uh, uncertainties regarding the age because it probably was uh, it was burned. It was exposed. It was exposed to heat, and the uh, heat may change uh, luminescence properties of quartz grains. So I'm cautioning with this age. But this age, the audience sediment of the of this bottom yellow uh, sand is uh, uh, could be trust. It's trustworthy, and you can see that the abandonment of of the kiln. Is dated to uh, 1030, well, one, let's say 900, uh, the, the late 900s to uh, uh, to the late uh, 1000, okay, AD. And um, that's very interesting in terms of, okay, we don't need to think as a system, as, a, as one uh, 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 system which is built on uh, at the same time everything is coeval and but rather uh, 
uh, certain places were were abandoned earlier than uh, other places. Um, and I will discuss it a bit later as well. And for example, and the other lab example is the area F structure, uh, um, in which you can see that um, here we have a small structure and what interested us is the, 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 the foundation to see on, on what it was built. So you can see as well, it's uh, early Islamic period. Um, very interesting. We are seeing that the main uh, uh, system is early Islamic. Um, at least with the structures, okay? Ah, okay, I want, yeah. Okay. Um, so if we have, we, we, do, we did a lot of OSL dating, I just saw, show that one. So if I do the, I show the frequency analysis of this, uh, the whole dating that we have, we have this uh, Holocene sea level stabilization, which is, the natural basal sand, which covers most of the area. Sometimes you have this red loam. And then we have this Roman period, which is at the bottom of the berms. Uh, we are not sure. Okay, I will explain it later. But uh, And then afterwards, we have this early Islamic, mainly Fatimid Caliphate uh, area, uh, period, sorry. Uh, and then we have some, some activity during the Crusader, but mainly you can see these natural sediments uh, um, overtopping the anthropogenic uh, system, the landscape. So, uh, so you can see it's a pattern of a punctuated landscape, meaning that you have a period of uh, shaping the landform, then it's kind of stabilizing, another period, uh, and then stabilization, and another period. Some of them were naturally uh, controlled by natural forces, and some by anthropogenic forces. Um, and as well, we use a portable OSL to kind of um, extrapolate or maybe interpolate. It depends on how we look at it. But uh, the samples that we have, the portable OSL results, uh, and um, uh, but we did we didn't do OSL dating. So we classify the different sedimentary units, and uh, according to the POSL results, we were able to say, okay. Uh, with distance from the sea, are these units to what period do they relate? Okay, so you can see that the anthrosol and anthro sediment are mainly early Islamic, as I shown before, uh, mainly Fatimid, by the way, and uh, um, some Crusader as well. Uh, some defil, defil, some are Roman, and some are uh, early Islamic. Uh, and uh, afterwards, you have this yellow sand uh, covering this uh, modified landscape, uh, which is scattered uh, in different periods. Okay? So if I want to sum up um, uh, or to classify the phases, so we have this natural uh, 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 period. This is just preliminary. I'm still working on that, but I wanted to show something. So we have this natural coastal uh, development during the uh, uh, late Holocene or middle Holocene uh, Mediterranean Sea Civilization. Okay, uh, this is mainly sand sheet. Uh, maybe we had the four dune at the northern part, not sure yet, because it's, a, like I said, it's a highly modified area. And you have a lot of nebchas and coppice dunes and stuff like that. Mainly, sand, it was mainly a sand sheet probably. Then you have the early Roman activity, um, which was burned. We are not we are not certain what was the purpose. Was it agricultural purposes? Was it just part of the refuse management? Uh, in Roman periods, they, they really cared about refuse. Actually, there is a saying that if you go to a Roman city, the highest volume of mass is refuse uh, to build, to, to make foundations and stuff like that. So they really cared about their refuse. Uh, and uh, it could be as well some kind of uh, sediment trap to prevent uh, aeolian or sandstorms and uh, aeolian transport of sand to to roads and uh, to the east and to the city to the urban urban center itself to the north. Uh, so uh, we are not sure exactly what was the purpose, but there was 
an activity over there. What is interesting here, just I want to um, point out an interesting thing. In most archaeological uh, uh, research in Israel, the Byzantine period is the most dominant because you have a, a lot uh, high density, uh, high dense uh, cities, okay, or villages. Uh, it, there was uh, high population density, okay, and here you don't see it, and that is very interesting for us, especially because Caesarea was as its as, uh, largest point during the Byzantine period. So it, it, it's a, an important thing to tackle eventually when we are uh, discussing it. And uh, as well, so afterwards we have the early Islamic, mainly Fatimid. So then you have the implementation. implementation, that's the word, implementation of the anthro sediment and anthro soil into this uh, environment, basically, they're transporting it into this plot and bam agroecological system. Okay. Um, so, uh, which I uh, showed before, and they are able to harvest year round crops. Um, and like I said, there was some crusaders activity uh, documented as well. Uh, another short movie. Sorry for the... So this is an animation made by the uh, Israeli Egyptian Food Authority. Okay? An animation of how the uh, landscape might have looked like during the Fatimid uh, or the Elias Islamic period. And uh, you see these small structures, scattered around, uh, scattered around and crops and agricultural practices and layers in the north. We do have some uh, assessment if we give you the bird to grow crops as well. We don't see any sedimentological uh, evidence for that. So we decided to not say much about it. Um, and the last phase is what we see today, basically, is how the natural environment adapted after the abandonment of the system. So you can see mainly the Western parts are uh, uh, because they are affected from the wave forces as well and uh, uh, storms from the sea. So they had much more uh, energy hitting them. They had to um, uh, stand for uh, much more energy compared to inner uh, burns. So some of them are uh, uh, destroyed or not completely destroyed, but uh, kind of flattened uh, and breached. Uh, and what you can see is that you can see sand encroaching uh, from the west to the east on these berms, on the uh, west eastern berms, uh, on the one hand. On the other hand, like I showed before, you get this uh, reduction in wind power and you get uh, much uh, less fetch land to transport wind further inland. So uh, it's a complex process, and uh, it's a complex process, sorry. And as well, we have this. Uh, a uh, small uh, uh, alluvium re reworking of this uh, anthro sediment at the berms uh, going uh, downstream uh, a bit, washing with uh, rainfall and runoff. Uh, so I will skip the conclusion, so Adam will have some time as well. Just this is a very important one point, that this is a highly resilient uh, system and this is very interesting as well for implementing uh, coastal uh, um, uh, uh, engineering kind of thing. I, I know in the, the Netherlands that I've always said about things like that of coastal armoring or dune armoring, and uh, this is very interesting how they use refuse to do this kind of thing. Okay, I don't know. What? thanks, Rosa. I'm Adam, if somebody doesn't know me. I'm about to finish my MA and geospatial analysis of the throat and microbiome system. I will only show you maps in this talk. I will not show you any graphs that I have. I will not show you this is not the title of my thesis. This is just uh, what I will show you.
Um, so Luton already showed like some maps based on this photo. And this is from 1945. And I have two from 1945. And you can see on this, they were made like in a succession, like a, an airplane were flown about the system. And this one was shot first probably. Um, and it shows the south. And this one, shows that like the second afterwards, shows the north. And this one is from 1918, also from the British military, made all of them. And it shows the old city of Kisaria, oblique. And this area is the northern part of the agroeconomic system in a very, very good quality, like a one meter resolution. I don't know how it's possible that they had such good um, aerial photos, but it shows, I will show you in another figure. Um, this is a modern author photo, which has also a demographic elevation model. I can differently um, scale the um, elevation and it shows satellite and it shows the berms and uh, with a higher um, um, pigmentation and the plots in the lower one. It's limited in the south because um, we have a factory here, the very, very large one. You saw it on the video, it's called Overgrabin, and it has like security regulations, so it's probably not allowed or cannot see the southern part on this picture. And yeah, so these are 469 plots that I was able to identify um they have different shapes they have different sizes they are differently arranged but there are systematics behind them the largest one here is uh like a football field more or less the smallest one the, the, the six smallest one are a little bit problematic because it's hard to map them. Like you can see, you you can barely see them in the pictures. So I would say just the six first one. I would be careful. Like the smallest one, what might be two hundred twenty maybe. And yeah, the mean the mean level is the mean uh, size is thousand one thousand two hundred zero nine. And and the standard deviation shows that they are very 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 right? different size, different size. And the total berms, like the, like all the trajectories of these black lines together, is sixty kilometers. And the longest continuous axis is that one, of course, from here to the end, the westernmost north south axis. And look what I made out of these pictures. Like I used for the south, the southern one, for the north, this high quality one, because I just can see this area. So we have the eastern boundary, which is the sea, this is easy. And the northern boundary is like the a, the end of this um, um, dune field. And we can only see plots until here, until this uh, line, but we cannot see them uh, on the top. Um, in the north. So, but they could be there. And we have like a few lines show actually that there might be like, like an axis, like not really evident plots and berms, but uh, I can see a little bit which indicates that they might have gone more north. And in the south, I think the south is um, problematic because here we have the Orota B and it's very um, rigged, the photo, because the airplane, when it flies, it's has a perspective distortion, so we cannot see everything there. But this Kukar Ridge, uh, Kukar means Aeolianites. It's um, it's a typical structure that 
that usually begins uh, along the southeastern coast in the distance from one and a half kilometers and high tide it uh, elevates the area so uh, from here it's impossible to build the spots it's not impossible to, to reach the groundwater so the you can see very clear that they built the plots until the very end. And so, and what I think that this coverage might have maybe went here, like, like inserted towards the sea because of this, uh, because of these plants here. So I think it went like maybe between here, maybe here. So that would mean, and, and, uh, and these um, pigmentations, I don't know, but might be because like it's, it's just uh, possible. So, uh, and maybe the small erosion because of water from here. So, we, I can just say that maybe it was until here and maybe it was until here. Okay, I'm too long in this figure. Um, in the aerial picture, again, this is a sample that is from another paper from Steinberg. Um, and it's a dumping site. So this dumping site was used to, to bring refuse to each of the plots. So it might have been inside, I don't know. But it, so far we saw that it's not inside, but it might have been like in the area. And these are the five areas where we do excavations. The blue ones, I show photos, but I will not show you now. It took some uh, ratios and and more cores from Steinberg, and the um, little thing squares are from a uh, field excavation from Itamar and Joel. And uh, they identified like stones with GPS. So they, whenever they found some stones, uh, they marked this location. So I just mapped the, um, showed all of this so we can find maybe more than the structures that we have. So this is the line field, this is the multifunctional structure. This is like um, some kind of a wall, it's not so important, I think. And this is uh, like a storage maybe, as we saw in the video, something like this, on top of the berm. And this is, uh, yeah, this is um, this is the Oros Ravine power station, you can see it here. And this is how much it overprinted, and this is how, how much it might have overprinted. And this is the main area where we took our excavations. Uh, zone one, zone two is, uh, be, is separated from zone one by, by the street. So red plots, uh, I can't really see, but green plots, I can see. Um, here's uh, like a surf club, Scheid uh, Vekai, I don't know. Um, and here's Kibbutz Stodiam. And inside of Kibbutz Sodiam in the north, you can see it because of this thing, but uh, there are two plots which which preserve this ones. Like it's like uh, in the in the kibbutz, uh, it's grass, but there's nothing on it. So if you want, we can dig there because it's a uh, different uh, geology. It's alluvium, it's not uh, it's not it's not the uh, um Cesarea Hadera Junfit anymore. And um, wow, I will show you in a minute what this is. Um, yeah, yeah. and um, this is the this is again the zone one from a, a photo from a satellite photo, actually, also an auto photo, and not so important. Yeah, so this is uh, zone three, zone four, and zone five in 2023. And this is also the same zones in 2023. And I was just uh, checking one day the, the satellite pictures and I was, and I just saw it. So um, it's, it's, it was not supposed to happen, but someone, some company decided to shave the plants and burn it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, agriculture. A modern agricultural practice on top of the. Uh, you know what? No. It's not young. Okay. 
I'm not dealing with that, but uh, someone, it was not planned, like this was not supposed to happen, like uh, it was someone did a mistake. Um, so we lost, uh, we lost, let's go back here. We lost on this uh, 32 plots, I think. I marked them here in gray. And what I think they call them to the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> And um, this, is, this is what I okay, we have to go. Um, this is what I mapped uh, the axis. Uh, in I just tried to because we say like like they have chess board like we we always say this chess board, and I saw that chess was coming to uh, to Persia yeah. around six hundred seven hundred. So they might have played chess or they might have been inspired. And, and for example, like here, here, this is very clear, these, these ones. And, and like you can see just that the northern axis are crossed by somehow cross, like it's more or less random, but it's very systematic also at the same time. And this is area D, good. Ah, yeah, this is area D. And um, so here I have my sections. This is a berm. This is this is a berm. There are two two berm sections, two two groundwater trenches, and uh, some more stuff. A pit, and uh, here's a wall, like in the plot. Um, Luther said that there were plot the anthrosol and the anthro sediment were like in the same time. At the moment, I think that the uh, I don't know, but uh, what, what I'm just uh, about to say that this anthrosol is like 90 years later, maybe? And no, you don't know? No. I didn't, but I think right now. And so, so plot was like uh, uh, anthrosol was anthrosol is the one that is the, the soil that is in the plot. It's uh, it was placed like 890, and the anthro sediment on top of the birds. Was that maybe not placed maybe 90 years later, which is a lot of time. So it was probably uh, innovation after the innovation. And this is it. Post innovation. Post innovation. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you, Rotem, for the talk. And thank you, Adam, for the addition of the mapping. So. <laughs> Before I, you know, I let you ask questions, I need to emphasize, I think an important thing is that, I'm not sure you said it, that the amount of labor that was invested in this uh, sand uh, field was uh, huge in terms of uh, manpower. And I think this is a very important in terms of the social uh, um, understanding of the environment at that time, that they invested a lot of time and effort in order to create this agricultural system. Yeah. Is... But we have some, because we see the Roman period, uh, the berms built, like they, they built the berms for the initial berms. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so we, we might think that, for example, the, the other cases of the plot and berms in Bikim and Yapriya, and they are much less, uh, much less um, 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 resilient and they are much less uh, developed as this system. And we think that, that the uh, basic, that, that the uh, early Islamic uh, people, citizens, they came to already a morphological modified uh, environment and then we just kind of, uh, they might have modified it a bit more in terms of reaching the groundwater in certain depth. But they, 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 it was took much less of uh, investment uh, compared to uh, what they would have done in Zikim and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, it took a lot. But we don't know if the Romans. The, we think that the, the preliminary Roman modification enabled this. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned about the age that the USA lady, right? The age that? 
the age that yeah. you've got, like it is 1000 years AD, one, one of the age you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. It is a very quite interesting like period because in Levant it was reported a dry it's a medieval planet economy. Mm -hmm. So did you like uh, compare your results with uh, other archaeological records from the world? And do you see the same pattern? Because I know during medieval time economy, there are like 1000 years AD, there was some changes in US uh, landscape changes because they started to do more uh, like uh, agricultural changes. So did you try to compare these records, like your records record with other, I mean, you know? So yeah, it's a difficult issue, I would say, uh, to say, was it, we are more thinking that it was more related to the, the more, the stronger force which enabled this was uh, eventually the uh, changes, changes in human uh, patterns. So when the Fatimid Caliphate began, it transported the center into uh, Cairo, which is about 400 kilometers from Caesarea, 400 to 500. Yeah, yeah. So, so you we think, think it, it's more related to that than climate change. It might be uh, the during this period, uh, the the early Islamic anyway, they are known for um, for uh, arid environment agriculture as well. So they might have used. We had actually there was a a, a workshop. Uh, about connectivity and disconnectivity of uh, knowledge in Barilan uh, a year ago. Uh, and tackling this, uh, exactly this issue, um, it's it's a hard thing to say, but I think we are more, it, it's secure to say that it was more affected than human uh, changing uh, geopolitical changes rather than climatic uh, environment. But do you think that human change, like human was induced by climatic changes? Ah, uh, that's, uh, you know, I'm... I'm or something like that. Uh, I would say, you know, eventually, yes, but this is a more transition in, inside the Islamic powers themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bit more complex, I think. Than, it's not like the Byzantine uh, early Islamic transition that they yeah. like to put uh, a lot of uh, other. Uh, yeah. Check, check if there are questions in the chat. And, there is no uh, question. And, uh, ask if someone wants to ask. They, they, uh, heard, voice is doing it. they heard me. No, they don't have any questions. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, it's easy. Uh, I have two questions that are completely the direction. One is a technical thing. Did you consider uh, getting a, a radar? We did, we did GPR. We did GPR. No, but there is a there is satellite mm -hmm. radar, and uh, in the Sahara, the satellite radar was useful in the sun to actually penetrate a, something that you might synthetic uh, aperture radar. Mm -hmm. Imagery, something that you might explore because they but, exist. They should, it, the, the, it should the right? sun sun is very but the, the thing is that you don't have sun. It's covered by the sun. The and I want to say it's a very dark. So the GPR, the problem is uh it's the, the stratigraphic units change kind of rapidly. So it's very difficult to use these uh tools. If, if you want to, to use GPR or this, um, for example, the satellite you're suggesting, the radar, you need some kind of uh, a natural environment to be, to be easier on, or, or larger uh, uh, areas. In the sun, you can try to see. You're saying it's not clean sun, don't they? Not clean sun, and it provides very clean. Yeah, I would still try because they do get the penetration even between trees and things like that. They they have been managing to do interesting things with that. So that's a, that's on one side. The other side, before and, and you sort of change it, and I I I'm left confused. Didn't the Roman really build the system, develop it, created there this kind of agriculture, and the Islamic? Are only re renovated the what the, what was there and used it. So why you don't have Byzantine? Uh, well, well, we are we are still you struggling. We are struggling. The I mean, the is, 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 is the, 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 the foundations are wrong. But most of them, it, it's hundreds. You you saying sixty kilometers of of uh, burns that were put by the Romans just for the fun of it? No, we don't. No, 
moment we really well we, i gave three options because we are not sure so our best option is refuse management which they did use refuse for uh no you need you you need to understand Mormon used refuse to to rebuild roads to re, they they use it in a they had a lot of uh in a systematic way yeah in a systematic way they they use refuse there is another assumption as well it was agriculture yes we don't know so you don't say so it, was, it looks too much like it was already prepared there uh might be might be we don't know we really don't know i think one, the thing is that you see in the maps that uh, at the beginning they are very systematic and then they start to be very uh, scattered so maybe you know the foundation this is the roman form, and then this is the, uh, the no 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 i don't think so i rather think that um the western one needed to be modified and uh, uh they have to be um over time Sustained because uh, the sea all the time we we still we saw an area B that went up the map. But if you remember, the area, area B structure is um, located in the four band, and um, and we saw that there was some uh, inputs uh, of uh, sediments from from the from the sea itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see that the, they had to sustain the four bands much more. So if you talk about this time difference between uh, 100 CE to 1000 CE, they might have need uh, to kind of prepare uh, to repair the, or the rest of yes. yeah. yeah. It's a very pervasive system for just 100 years. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a uh, uh, Rodian. It was. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. So Rodian, we even do it. Yeah, you send them to get things. But we can say it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, so, it's, it's my assumption, but it can't be. Really... Thank you very much. Thank you for the talk. Thank you for the audience. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one.